ಸ್ಮರಣಮಾತ್ರೇಣ ದ್ವೈತವಾಸನ ಪ್ರಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ಬೋಧಾತ್ಮಕಾಯ ನಮಸ್ತಸ್ಮೈ ಭಗವತೆ ಶ್ರೀ ರಮಣ ಮಹರ್ಷೆ ಬೈ ದ ವೆರಿ ಥಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೂಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಡುಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಮೀ ಇಸ್ ಗಾನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಬೆಸ್ಟೋಸ್ ಮೀ ವಿತ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ರಮಣ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಐ ಬೌ ನೋ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಮೈ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ they say there are three types of seekers mature one are those who hear once anything from upanishad and they become that like they are just waiting to hear that no method no practice just hearing once as if they get memory of everything back as if they are sitting only on the verge of dream then there are people who listen contemplate and they become and the third seekers at the lowest level are who are full of doubts and questions it is not me i am just talking from vedanta what i learned in the past but it doesn't matter whether you have doubts or questions whether you are only contemplating and i believe most of the people even the one who have just heard a mahavakya and realized they at some stage must be at that level where they had doubts and questions maybe they have sorted out in some way or the other in past lives but a seeker must move from doubts and questions to practice to contemplate and then abide like buddha it was told to his parents that don't expose him to any suffering otherwise he will leave everything actually this was not told it was told that he might become a sage and they thought if he gets everything he will never become a sage and in spite of everything seeing the reality of life about suffering he left all physical comforts and there must be some sadhana from the past if we all see the journey is when a seeker starts he wants to seek he wants to realize and in bhagavad gita also they say that the seeker 
tries to seek and then when he seeks he seeks himself only you don't seek anything new anything fresh anything different from you you seek yourself only the seeker dissolves in that self and you see all scriptures every gyani says i am that what you are seeking bhagwan ramana always said that it is uh, i am in you krishna said the same i am in you how can they be so sure that they are in us i can understand someone can say i am self realized i am the knowledge but they are so so sure that they are in us as if they are they have come out from us and projected in front of us and then telling us that i am you how much grace is of this self which has come out and telling us that i am you this itself is such a big grace that someone in front of us is saying i am you then our job is to be exactly what they are saying i am you whatever the way they are functioning we should function like that functioning without ego functioning is happening and we are just observing in our supreme bliss not doing anything not opposing anything still body can oppose but understand this is the thing because all actions of the body we take our actions and our responsibility so we think i am doing if i don't do then this body will be dead how can i leave body like this all the body is moving with his own intuitive awareness some power is giving all intelligence to it living in body in pure presence this can only happen if we are sachet if we are alert it is a stage of alertness more awakened than what we are awake in this waking state more awakened this state how this mind whatever we are carrying can merge in brahman how can it merge because at some stage it has to merge it has to finish completely when it becomes so subtle that it its existence is not there it becomes so subtle which we call sometimes pure mind or no mind to know that silence this mind has to become silent mind is nothing but our involvement in this world at different levels if our involvement is not there mind will merge in self so keeping our whole interest in this divine in us all the time so that our 
attention, our desire doesn't go to anything else. This will make us establish as a witness to the bodily actions and activities happening. But if a part in us keeps thinking about, I need to do this, I need to do that, I have to do this, I, I, mine, me, then you can never be a witness. So all the actions done with doership are bondage. All actions. And you can do millions of actions without doership and you can be free. We have to fix our internal structure. No need to fix up external type of work or family or your eating habits. They all help to certain extent, but ultimately we have to give up doership. Sometimes you discuss with some who is new to this path, they always have this question, how can I be witness? I still have to do things, this body needs shower, this body needs to go to toilet, this body needs dressing, who will do it? This itself shows that there is so much of ego, so much of attachment to the body, so much of ownership of the body. You cannot make such a novice person understand truth. They have to do more contemplation. Maybe they might need to get some faith in scriptures because they cannot have faith on a simple person who lives next door. Someone might be having big beard or living in a cave for 40 years, then they might have some faith because it is a game of faith also. How can you have trust in someone's word? Then people read different scriptures, they compare notes. Even Bhagwan's devotee I have seen, they read talks, talks by someone else. On the same day what has happened, they are confirming by different people what they have written and trying to absorb so they can have faith. Because if I don't know the truth, if someone else is telling me the truth and telling me how to go to truth, I can listen to someone, I can also show that I respect but the real respect is if I have faith in teaching and I practice and then I'll get through it. Some people are very simple. They can have faith on everything. For them it is very easy. More we are learned, less we have faith in things and we are skeptical about things. Egoistic mind is a scientific mind. It does not accept easily anything said. Then we have to practice, at least practice and see whether it works. If it doesn't work, then look into some other method. Or if the whole thing about knowing truth looks illogical and of no interest, then just leave it. When a time will come, it will happen, otherwise that's okay. First prayer of a seeker to divine should be 
create that love, that interest to know that. Even this longing comes from grace only. Otherwise, whole world will leave what they are doing, their competition and their wars, and they will sit and they will try to find the self. But it is not happening. That means their interest is in something else. So we can say there are chosen few who have still some interest in it. We call them seekers. For a seeker, you don't have to change your profession or what you're doing. Whatever role is being given, that is given to the body. We have nothing to do with that. We just have to move away from I am the body idea. Thing which separates us from the body is silence. Silence is like a shield which makes us separate from body. Body has noise. Mind belongs to body. There are different layers of body, some subtle parts, some gross parts. We are no part, we are not even in parts, we are in finite awareness, silent awareness. If we stop believing in mind, stop listening to mind and start listening to this sound of silence, And getting attracted to this awareness without ego, without doership, without any agenda, not even agenda to liberate or seek anything, just be. Shifting our energy, our attention to it. In no time, it becomes a natural state, effortless state. If you really want to know whether you are there or not, There will never be any doubt about anything. About any doing, there will be no ifs and buts. Mind makes us confused. People say, I'll do this, but this might happen, and then they start doing, and then they pull out, and then they do again. This all is mind. A jnani free from mind Doing failure doesn't matter. Things happening, not happening doesn't matter. If they have to happen, they have to happen. Nobody can stop it. And if it has not to happen, it will not happen. Both ways it is right. This is complete harmony. You are in harmony with whatever is happening. No personal say in anything. Because there is no personal say, there is no utility of mind left. Understand mind is devil in us, which is creating resistance against the divine. 
divine is this witnessing self which knows that everything is happening as per lord's wish so the personal wish drops or the personal wish is exactly what the lord's wish is so no separation and so we call it advait one no two there can never be love with divine in duality you can pretend love but it will not be complete love love is only in one two is resistance always two is restlessness how close you are to self doesn't matter some restlessness will always be there spasmodic realization giving you bliss will give you more hangover suffering when it's not there but eventually that longing will make it one for an ignorant fool who is not even on a path of seeking it doesn't matter but for a seeker who is so close for him it is so important to finish this game he is burning he is on fire and i know it i have gone through it and i know all people i speak they might be just a tail end left but they want to finish it i have to say it again that this path is only for the one who is who is deeply into it who is only separated by just like a smoke screen the other day someone who was attending asked me that i listen but i have no interest in god or ramana or whatever you teach and asked me what should i do i said just remember and he said i want to but no interest i couldn't answer more than this because if you have no interest then game is over what can i do it is not pushing you can't push anyone into it if you have no interest that's good fulfill your other interest kabir says when this chitta this consciousness which we have corrupted contaminated when it becomes rarefied it becomes pure uses the word jini very very subtle how it becomes subtle this chitta all what we have so many concepts about things when we become conceptless concept lens no concept left no belief system nothing 
how others dress, how others see, how others behave, to an extent that even not concerned about this body, how it looks, what it wears, how it moves, what it does. You become so unconcerned with all things which are worldly, with this body, around, whatever, then you are on path of liberation. And it all starts with own mind. Whatever conditioning it is in, I discard it right now, forever. If this is our attitude and we take promise to that, we can be free in no time. But what we do is we take out one concept, we take out second concept, third, there are millions of concepts. How can you be free? Then we say, look, these things are okay, but these things I cannot. Where I comes and strong I comes, you are stuck. So best is to make your friendship with this neutral, impartial awareness. That silence. Spend time in silence. Try to spend whole day in silence. Whether you work or you don't work, doesn't matter. Don't try to pick up things, watching YouTube, watching Facebook, watching this. I haven't called this friend for the last two weeks. Let's call. This is what mind does. And the whole day is passed and you accept silence. You are disturbing silence. If we decide not to disturb silence, that is more than enough. Someone call, someone ask, don't get annoyed, sort it out. Whatever your job, someone speaks, do it. But remember that you are a devotee of silence. So I don't have to break silence at any stage, even if 100 people are sitting in the room. I don't have to say a joke so everyone enjoys. This is what we all do. We do it with good intention because we want people not to be felt left out and we should all be part of it and very good intention. But then we give up that energy which is abiding in silence. Whenever we feel that we need to Break silence. Always remember Bhagwan's photo, his picture. Always in silence. Only commenting if someone asks. Mostly yes and no. Sometimes no answer when he knows that other one is full of ego. Because look, questions are also of different level. A questioner can ask teacher just to show their own knowledge. Because we all have done that. Sometimes when a questioner asks a question, everyone gets impressed that he knows to that extent that this intricate question can be asked. That means he knows before that everything. So you show your knowledge to everyone. The second question can be to degrade teacher, to show or to doubt or to show deficiency in the teacher by asking a question for which you know he has to say, I don't know. And showing, look, he doesn't know even this. And the third question can be a really a question for your freedom. You're asking with humbleness, with humility, and you want to know because this is just eating you up. It appears to you that if this question is being answered, then you're doubt free and then you will be in nirvana. So it happens on path of 
spirituality some questions looks like they are the burning questions because that's the way mind plays keeps you on your toes you think this is the thing which if i know if this doubt gets cleared then everything is fine but usually what happens is one doubt goes and the second comes and third comes but if we know that all doubts are part of mind not me let them be but i will stay in my pure silence more we are attracted towards silence that silence changes environment around us so hardly anyone is disturbing us this energy make sure that if you are sincere about it that no disturbance comes to you and when you get deeper into it you don't know what to speak to anyone to whom to call and to ask what everything appears to be an effort unnecessary effort and disturbance to the silence once it you reach that stage then the journey becomes so super fast everything dissolves in this silence all identity is lost in it all the pride of body or your job or whatever nothing is left the one who was pride of everything is no more only praise to the lord is left this body this mind this mouth becomes a mouthpiece of propaganda to the lord that lord which has no name no form which is in this body in every body which is the living that is the one living rest all are acting in india every god has 100 names 1000 names what does this mean that god has no name you can call by any name all glory of god is our own glory whichever religion whichever culture is talking about it they are all talking about this only another good point to identify that you are progressing is more you stay in silence i and mine starts disappearing you feel so light all the weight is of ego ego gone you become subtle than anything subtler than air all the people who are have doership 
they have no trust in absolute and they are full of ego even egoistic person can say i am thinking and i am doing but we need to remember energy comes from the source if that current in the body goes away what can you do if mental faculties are not working what can you do taste pure silence within you we have so much of time every day when we are just on our own not talking maybe driving washing dishes cleaning house walking don't kill time by reading by watching by talking by becoming a work alcoholic workaholic all the time some people wants to do they feel pride that i am productive know that not doing anything is most productive for a seeker not doing anything which includes thinking also be with silence become silence even when you talk it should come from silence even when you fight it should come from silence all acts should come from silence source should be silence no middleman no mind no ego only addiction we should accept is of silence once you know silence it becomes a real vairagya dispassion nothing attracts you become mira bai always remembering the god within i call that god as silence that god is bliss bhagwan's real teaching is to find the silence within and be with that
We are pure silence. Same silence in which our mind merges every night in deep sleep should be experienced while we are awake. If there is a name of your Ishta Devta, call silence by that name. But there is nothing beyond silence. Glory of silence has been said by so many saints and sages and scriptures. Mind is activity and silence is pure stillness. Look into all mental health issues. They are all related with noise in the head. All stress related with noise in the head. All greed, selfishness, anger, jealousy. All is a thought in the mind. A wrong thought, a negative thought. All the proud ahankar is also a thought in the mind. All attachments, me and mine, is only a thought in the mind. All good and bad is but a thought in the mind. Do's and don'ts are all thought in the mind. God or no God, realization, no realization is a thought in the mind. We are pure silence. We don't know anything about thought. For us all thoughts are illusion. All thoughts are a trap.
all thoughts bound us in a concept. We are pure awareness, uninvolved, witness, Sakshi Bhav. Our real nature is this witnessing only. Our Shuddha Swabhav is Sakshi Bhav. But when we get involved with mind, There is no witnessing. Go deeper into your silence so the mind dissolves in it. Once mind dissolves, you only see beauty in everything. Nothing is ugly. Nothing is less important. And everything is equal. Because everything has the same awareness, reflecting in different forms. Forms are transient. And essence is the same awareness. It has taken different shapes at different times and different bodies. We cannot judge any body at any time. What it has gone through, it only knows. And all has come from the source and will go back to the source. And source is pure. So everything is pure. So everything is perfect. It is just going through some turbulence or transient phenomena. which is nothing but an illusory dream. See that pure life in everything, a small plant, a weed, we call it weed, but it is a plant. It gives beautiful wildflowers. We give importance to different things. Everything is equal. People on both sides of war zones are just human beings, pure awareness. Whom to support? Support everything. Support with your pure energy. Give love. Pray for their well-being. Pray they get some insight into futility of all wars.
they are all our brother and sisters their suffering is our suffering no one is different pray for peace pray from your heart pray all the time for well being of everyone any small change in awareness at any given point affects the whole awareness because everything is connected if you spread peace with your pure intention it will reach where it has to reach in the best possible way as people who disturb peace plays a role in much more higher potential people who spread peace play major role because awareness helps peacekeepers people who destruct peace are creating their own destruction but people who abide in peace and spread peace they make it exponential they are doing the work of awareness only awareness never wants to harm anything it is its self supreme bliss satchit anand truth consciousness bliss loka samasta sukhino bhavantu let everyone be happy and peaceful our intention should be universal our message our prayer should be universal live in unbiased impartial pure awareness always awareness is so impartial it does not even sides the body which speaks all bodies are in awareness yet it is free from all bodies this is reality this is truth this is truth of all of us whether we know it or not we can stay in our egoistic dream which doesn't change truth be a devotee of your own silence love it respect it 
be in it all the time. Merge in it. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Arunachal Ramanaya When I say Arunachal Ramanaya, don't think Arunachal Ramanaya is in Tirunamalai. It is in your heart. That purity is in all of us. And don't please take it as a religious thing. It is not religious. Bhagavan was not religious. It is not Hinduism, it is not a religion, it is nothing, it is you. You can call by any name. Instead of Ramana, you can call Christ or Prophet Mohabbad or no one or awareness, doesn't matter. But still we need to put our ugly ego in someone's feet. If you put to Arunachala, it will help you to melt away. You can put in anyone's feet, whomever you think is that supreme. So, it's all same. Thank you, thank you.